Now, what has happened to this country? Why is it this country has morphed from a lion achieving a nation to a goat? You jump from a lion, you become like a goat. You have become like a goat nation. You know, the reason I like talking about a goat, or goats, the likening, some of the behaviors that we display in leadership as that of like God spirit of a God, a spirit of a God, is that when you look at a God, a God has no direction. This brain, which is like a wakabushi or a God, these brains, they're not going to help this country at all. It will not help this country. When you take a kabushi, you get a God, you put it where there is. Millet, it will never get out of that, that, that millet. It will eat millet to death. I've seen these things happen. A goat is never satisfied. So, we need a leadership that does not care about its own values. It is written that war unto a nation whose leaders think of the bellies in the morning. Kachiro Chiro think of their bellies. Big bellies that are never satisfied. They think about their bottomless pockets. And every time it's about deals, how do you make deals? We cannot afford to be a dealer nation. And we are talking about industrialization or job creation. We cannot. Why should this country be talking about power deficits? Why should this country be talking about unemployment? When we have so much to convert to wealth. I'm talking about the wealth that we have to convert that to liquid. The cash that we need to invest in other sectors. We have coal. How many coal power generating, generating projects have we set up as a country? We are just talking about Mamba Corridors until now. How much have we invested? We have this coal here. Go to countries like Mauritius. Mauritius does not have coal. They import coal. I have been to Mauritius like many other countries. And yet they do not have all these bottlenecks that we have as a country. Are you aware? That Mauritius reached a stage where they had more jobs than available. Labor. And therefore, Mauritius has been entering into agreements with countries like Uganda, University of Makerere, going to all these other countries to go into agreements with them so that when people graduate from there, they can go and work in, in their industries there. They are also investing in health tourism. They are looking for skilled medical personnel globally to go and work in their, in their own healthcare industries there so that more revenue can be generated from health care tourism. I'm talking about the tiny country of Mauritius. Why are we failing to utilize all these resources that we have? Name the new discoveries of minerals across the country. It is no wonder that I have put the map showing the mineral resources on my page to remind us every day that we are not poor. We should never get used to the idea that we are poor. I hate poverty for one, and I believe that we must hate poverty. Because the owner of silver and gold is the Almighty. And it is not the will of the Almighty that you and I, that a people with so much, should continue in poverty. It is not honoring a God. No matter how much you pray, if you are devout, in whichever way you are praying, those prayers are useless prayers. There are things that we need to do. We need to move outside prayer. In fact, one of the biggest killers of this nation's destiny is the region. Because we want to be more spiritual and become earthly relevant. This is killing this country. There are those young people who need to be employed. We need job creation in this country. There are those young men and women who have been trained across all sectors from economics, law, engineering, agriculture, name it, education, but they are on the streets. And we are saying we don't have the capacity. And we are, we are trying to hide behind the debt. Yes, we are talking about 17, minimum of $17 billion as a debt. Now, what is $17 billion? If we can have an individual, one person in the world who does not own a country, being $300 billion in terms of net worthiness, we have such billionaires. 
How can a person, one individual, be richer than this country? This person, some of them are just in high cities. That's all. That's what they've invested in. They are billionaires. And the country with copper, the seventh biggest producer of copper, a country with diamonds, a country with gold, a country with Switzerland, a country with, uh, with emeralds, a country with all these you know, species that we have in terms of flora and fauna, the land, the arable land, the water resources, is going to beg. It is no wonder some of us, like I speaking for myself, I believe that you and I were duty to transform this continent, this country, and across Africa, this inter African continent. Because this poverty mentality is giving rise for us to fall to all kinds of ideologies. And this is destroying our continent. Africa, therefore, has become the target for all kinds of radicalizations. Because somebody will come with little money and say, please go and do this. And somebody will do it. Now, we cannot afford to be the center of terror, to be the center of conflict. It's about time that we rose above all the current limitations and be able to look at what we are able to do as a country. I do not believe that. We can afford to agently, as a matter of agency, do an audit of resources. We urge the government, as a matter of agency, to commission or to have a commission that is going to undertake an audit of the resources that we have. We can, we can, audit, we can call it a resource audit commission. Let us get experts from the forestry sector. Let us get experts from the mining sector. Let us get experts from the water sector, water engineers. Let us put them together. Young geologists, we have so many industrious young people, very creative young people in this country. Let, us, let them be part of this kind of commission. And let it be given clear terms of reference. They need to go out there and do a resource audit and be able to determine if in Impica we are saying we have discovered gold, if up north here we are saying there is gold, you go to western province, even what appears to be, you go to western province, you are looking at that sand, are you aware that that sand can be used to make computer chips? Western province can be a center for manufacturing of computer chips. What are we doing? with all these resources that we have as a country. It does not make sense to me that we want to keep looking for solutions outside. Prescriptions from outside will not take us out of the current problems that we have as a nation. We need to transform these resources into liquid cash and be able to develop all sectors, social sectors in our country. We as a country can become the biggest donor to other countries. The help that we are looking for outside there is within. This so-called resource case must be lifted off of our heads. Let us understand that in terms of the brains, I'm talking about the intellectual capacities, collective capacity, that the collective capacity of this country, we have it. We have our own celebrated economists. Talk about that be somewhere. And as a matter of agency, I think that all state managers need to read, to start with humility, that book called Dead Ed. You are going to look for 20 million US dollars? What is 100 million US dollars? What is 1 billion dollars? What is 20 billion dollars? Which I, as an individual, can make. I can transform what I have, the land and resources, and be able to make those billions and become a billionaire as an individual. How about a nation? With all the control that we have, we need also to ensure that we do what I'll call sealing the leakages of these resources. Smuggling. The real smuggling is in the mineral sector. Emeralds are being smuggled out of this country, out of this country. The gold, the sujilats. This sanguapo mentality, mulidi opite mentality, bamulidi opite, bamulala kwa chenama. I wanted to say something, but I'm trying eat and go. Sang up mentality. It's killing this country. And the lack of a sense of direction. I and I can never develop this country. And we need to build trust among ourselves to know that those who are in the governing party 
and those who are in the alternative parties can work together for this country. I dream and look forward to building a country where we work together across all the four winds and four corners of this country. A country where we sit down, even if we don't like each other, for the sake of this country, we need to sit together on the table of brotherhood and sisterhood and be able to chart a course that will work for all of us. Look at the potential in agriculture. Instead of looking at the opportunities that we can create for, for traders, manufacturers, I'm talking, about, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about millers, I'm talking about farmers. Instead of looking at those opportunities, we still want to go back to the same culture where when we have a bump harvest, they impose what is called an export ban. And then they themselves, so the government is exempt. And then they began to, they, they begin, and they began then, but they, they, one, we, one, we, are, we are seeing this happen where they began to sell. And they are reaping from the sweat and blood of farmers. This is totally unacceptable. It's farmers who are liberated for this country. Why can't you open up all this? And we have proposed in the UPP that it's about time that we created a farmers union. No, I'm talking about the farmers union, a union that to be able, not just that to be able to, uh, to help to market these whatever various produce on behalf of the farmers to find the market out and be able to market. It's about time that we had all these cooperative unions at district level and then move to provincial levels as well as at national levels cooperative unions. We can go back to that concept. And then we have a marketing board that will be responsible for marketing on behalf of farmers. So that farmers, this country, can become the exporter of crops, high value crops. Even this ordinary corn or maize, as we call it, we can become the biggest exporter and let the farmers get the real value for that. This is the only way that we are going to increase the income levels of our people. And we need to be honest with ourselves. But as a matter of urgency, we are calling for a resource audit. So that beyond that audit, we can engage, we can discuss with our creditors, we can tell them that, look, we have just one gold mine. If one gold mine, because, and I believe this, one gold mine, just one gold mine, can create, can give us billions of revenues, and we can pay off those debts. We can go and, and discuss with these that, look, we have green fields, and we can offer you specific green fields for you to invest in those and then to be able to generate your resources. Leave us with all these other green fields that we have, which we need to develop locally. And we have sufficient entrepreneurs in this country who can help us as a nation to find practical solutions, to find the capital that we need locally and be able to run these resources that we have as a country. This is the only way that this country is going to be repositioned. Look at the many young people who are roaming our streets. They have nothing to do. Not because that is that is how that is that they want. Because we are failing to do basics as a nation. And here we don't want to play like a blame game. Because some of these challenges that we have, they are an accumulation of failed policies in the past. And they keep accumulating. But we need to put a stop to this. There has to be an end. We need to be firm. There is no way as a country we can permit a situation where it's the outsiders who are coming to rip off this country, especially in the mining sector. These are working in cahoots with some of the international crooks. We have many international conmen in this country who do not represent this country at all. They represent foreign interests. These international conmen economic hitmen must be taught that, they must, that Zambia belongs to us. And these hitmen, well, I'm talking about economic hitmen, these are cross sectors in the private sector, they are there. They don't even value this country. All they are looking at, they have joined these hitmen, it's about what they can get from this country. And then leave the rest, condemn the rest to, to sufferings, to untold misery. Fellow citizens, if this is something that we want to be smiling about, then I question whether up there, because, you know, as I've said before, 
There's a difference between Ubushiro and Ubukuba. Ubushiro has treatment. Ubukuba, there's no treatment. Because Ubukuba, each Puba will look normal. Each Puba. It's about time that we decided to abandon Mubukuba. And it's very difficult to flow Mubukuba. This way, Mubukuba, I think it's very important. I think we need to be talking about it every day in our languages. Wherever we are coming from, Mubukuba, Mubukuba, the moment we decide that it's about time that we put a break to this, it will help us. Because that way we begin to seek wisdom. And I think that our actions are going to be those that will put this country first. Putting the people first and taking back our country. There are so many ways in which a nation can lose our sovereignty. And this is what is happening today. As I said, they took our country. We took it back. In 1964. But over the years, we have seen a trend where we are freely giving this country back to the same people who came only for their interests and not the interests of the local people, the owners of this country. Because each nation is allotted to a people. This is our nation. And those who come to Zambia, let them come legally. America belongs to Americans. And when Americans say America first, they mean it. Yes, it must be America first. Zambia must be first to the people of Zambia. So that when we meet in the Committee of Nations, it's each one's interest first. And then we need to look at those common interests without trading the interests of this country. And that's why we have foreign missions there. Foreign missions, the Kwakuya, Mukste Fiab Wede Wede. Fiab Kunaba, Babu Tuma as ambassador, Tabateka and Kunyamasushi. They have sent to us an ambassador, the Kuya Kunyamasushi Paf Kunayo, Babu Tuma as ambassador, in order for you to go and represent this country. We want you to represent what this country can do, putting Zambia first. That if anyone must come and invest in this country, it must be the people of Zambia first. But, there must be deliberate policy measures. Where we decide, if we're talking about land, I know of countries, for instance, where a foreigner cannot get land. There must be a partnership with the local people. If you come up with the law, if you're the Minister of Lands, what are you doing to reform the land policies? So that you come up with a policy, if you're talking about land, you go to Solwezi, you go to Minilunga, you decide, you say, this land in Milunga belongs to the people of Minilunga and those Zambians who are settling there. When I'm talking about Milunga, I'm talking about the Zambians who are there in Minilunga. Or a Zambian who also wants to go and get land in Minilunga. Let them get the land first. Then when others come, they must come and partner with the people. This situation we are seeing where a foreigner comes, within a day they get a title. Zambians find it as a nightmare to get the title. Oh, we are always know they have invested now $50 million. They're building a center to make title deed issuance easier and faster. I think it can be more practical. Let us put the people of Zambia first as a matter of agency. Even when it comes to all these resources that we have, we can decide that when it comes to the mining sector, we want to put the people of Zambia first, especially when it comes to precious minerals or precious stones, as we call them, so that we promote partnerships. So that if we are looking for capital elsewhere, the people will be put first here. They will be repositioned. Otherwise, this country has become This one comes, China comes. No, 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 no. We have, I even read, I, I've been talking about the Bambas, second hand Bambas. Or second hand Nikas and Bambas, whatever you call them. I've been talking about this. I read, I think, last week that, uh, that there's some agency which had moved in to try and stop that to confiscate all those kind of second words. What kind of country are we? Second bumpers, China, Afwaramo, Nyambarika, Afwaramo, Korea, Afwaramo, Kuzambia, Afwaramo, Afwaramo. I think that we need to be ashamed of ourselves. Why are we doing this to ourselves as a nation? You know, I think that's about time that we began to take control of the affairs of this country. It's about time that we put this country first. It's about time that we rose 
above anything personal to look at the country first. It's not about me or what I went through. It's about, let it be about the people. Let it be about the country first. Zambia first. Because Zambia first means my personal interests must be subordinated. They are subordinate to national interests. That's why we must learn to sit even with those we don't like. We must let the playing field be leveled. And this is very important because every Zambian is of equal worthy. Irrespective of color, tribe, or creed, belief, we are all Zambians, fellow citizens. And that's why we need to codify all these things I'm talking about so that we don't leave them to the whims and caprices of individuals. And as long as we continue to operate like a cup, which is open, because a cup, I've spoken about this, you get a cup, you urinate in it, it's a cup. Don't complain, you put water, it's a cup. We can't be a cup, we can't be a country. This country has been transformed into Chivansacheshiru. Anyone who come in and China is a mumpira wakwai. Lebanon is a mumpira wakwai. Through a tamper. We have been like spectators. Chivansacheshiru. We are a mumpira wakwai. This is what we are saying, no. It's about time that we brought sanity in terms of policy promulgations to promulgate the policies that work for our country. And as a matter of agency, I'm going back to this topic, it's about time that we did a resource audit. And once you have an idea, I can assure you, we'll establish that this country's balance sheet is health. And we are far wealthier than the many countries that we go to to ask for aid on a bigger split. This is our submission tonight. I know it's a very difficult night for some of us who are Arsenal supporters. It's very hard. So even to address you, knowing that we have had a very bad night, it has been a very big challenge. Our night has been destroyed by a very useless small team. We are not happy at all. But we believe that miracles happen. I don't know. We just pray that uh, Manchester City should make more mistakes so that we can, we can go through. This is our prayer. It's a sleepless night. It's a hard night, fellow citizens. But we have no option. So... Fellow Arsenal or Gunners, it's a hard night for us, you know. After this broadcast, we are going to private first of all, because we are going to share. Thank God I don't have a TV, <laughs> so instead I just look at results. That's all I get. So to be continued, we'll be doing a series where we'll be talking to you on different sectors on matters that affect this country so that we can educate each other and learn from one another. Thank you. Good night.